Hello and welcome to our premier episode of Dreamland Voices. My name is Richard Mwenja, your host, live from the University of Nairobi. Now on this very episode, we will be looking at conversations around matters economics. And our topic of discussion today is on the Financial Act of 2019, which President Uhuru Kenyatta recently received it and ascended it into law. Now matters to do with this Financial Act of 2019 is going to be expounded on by a young economist as well as an educator and an alumni of Young African Leaders Initiative. She's also an expert on matters hydroponic farming, but today she is doing what she does best on the trade of economics. Now her name is Kabri Nyona and she'll be joining me right after this break. Well, folks, we have her on set, Ms. Kabri Nyona, an economist and a student live from the University of Nairobi. Well, Kabri, welcome on set. Thank you so much for having me today. <laughs> All right. And actually, yeah. one of the issues we are going to talk about uh, today is one that has, that has actually been trending in the blogs, uh, in matters economics and uh, the world of, of money. Mm. We've seen the Financial Act of 2019 being ascended into law. And it was actually ascended into law recently, barely three weeks ago, by the president himself. Well, part of the motive behind uh, the Financial uh, Act of 2019 being ascended into law, experts viewed it, I mean, just viewed it uh, as uh, a measure to ensure there is access to credit to private sectors such as SMEs and also a way of ensuring that the exploitative, uh, I mean, exploitative avenues by, say, Shylocks and other lenders are really scrapped. So it's a two-way thing. One, it's a measure to ensure there is access of credit to the private sector. Yeah, and also it's a, it's a measure of trying to just cut all the exploitative avenues that were there from Shylocks to other lenders. But also there is something that's really popping up and uh, the bone of contention here. The matters to do with the scrapping of the bank interest rate capping. Mm -hmm. To an ordinary Kenyan who is out there, this is the highlight of the, finance, I mean, the financial bill of 2019. What does that translate to? Uh, so first of all, what I think is that uh, there, is, there is need to have a meaning and understanding to an ordinary mwananchi regarding the dynamics of this uh, inter uh, interest capping rate. And so first of all, I think uh, we should have a meaning of, to the interest rate ceiling, which is similar to what I'm talking about. It's synonymous. And so a basic meaning would be that it's just a regulatory measure by the banks and, uh, that is imposed on banks and financial institutions to have a certain lending rate that they can offer to their customers and most importantly who are the Kenyans themselves and so if we understand the meaning of the interest rate capping then it's similar to the interest rate ceiling and so when we scrap it off that means that now banks become the bosses they wow. decide the interest rates and now we are at their mercy for some reason I will say that yeah wow yeah. now looking at it from the two sides of the coin it might bring forth some positivity as well as some negativity but also there's a point of caution and one thing that really puts forth in terms of uh, caution and, uh, and fear among the private sector is uh, just how much discipline is needed by the banks to ensure that they don't go overboard. And now because they are at liberty to, to, to set their interest rate uh, where they feel like they should be, how much discipline is needed by these banks and other lenders just that they don't come back and hunt their clients at the end of the day? Okay, thank you. I'll take you back to about two weeks ago and uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta was speaking about he's not also sure, he's not, ra he's, not he's not sure about the rationality of the banks on how they are going to determine the interest rates. And so it's, it's, it needs more of a discussion on how we need regulatory measures. But I'll put this uh, to task by maybe the Central Bank of Kenya who have more mandatory and uh, they, are, they can take charge of just being an oversight to make sure that the customers or the, those people who are taking these loans are not at their mercy as such by high interest rates. So if we can have the central bank to take this role and make sure that the, the banks and the financial institutions who are you know, giving the loans to the SMEs or the locals, make sure that it's a bit affordable because we are looking at an issue of affordability and also availability and accessibility as well. So it's so really important to have the central bank oversee everything so that we have an order 
or a means of how we are ensuring that people are not really exploited in this regard. Yeah. Wow, but, but actually it should be banned that uh, the CBK really needs to ensure that there are prudent measures, not just measures, because before it has uh, put forth measures that haven't worked. We've seen banks exploiting uh, their clients. It's perhaps why in 2017 they had to do the capping because banks were going overboard and actually haunting their very same clients, doing exorbitant uh, high uh, rates on the loans, or at times just bringing all the, I mean, the dynamics that weren't really acceptable yeah. by the lenders. So I think we should be talking about prudent measures, not just measures by the CBK. Yeah. This time around it has to work. Mind you need how the economy is doing and the financial year is actually at a crisis. I think you should support me that the measures have to be prudent and not just ordinary measures, right? Yeah. I join you in, in with regards to that. I think that we should stop every other time repeating a repetition of the mistakes that we, we have. Back in 2017, the 14th of September, we had now the interest rate caps because initially banks were exploiting people. And now again, we are now scrapping them off. And we don't have a, we don't want a, a repeat of every other time. We are, yeah, yeah. So we don't want to put people at in jeopardy on how to decide in taking the loans and every time you're being swinged around and so i think it's high time that we make we consult actually involve everyone in consultation the stakeholders that are involved so that we have prudent measures as you're saying so i think that's very important to have um, structures and measures so that we don't have a repetition of the mistakes that we have well also uh Part of actually the motive for repealing uh, this section, that the review of the Banking Act, was to ensure that this capping is scrapped off. Now also with the scrapping of the cap, it's a measure that, that is actually uh, uh, seen uh, as a way of ensuring this easy access to loans and also maybe a higher percentage of people access these loans. We are talking about the private sector mostly, the SMEs and also other people interested in loans out here. So to these very same SMEs, now the short and medium sized enterprises. Just how much effect will it have on them? The long term effect and also the short term effect. Okay, so with regard to that question, uh, is that the SMEs are going to be affected adversely. Once the, ba the banks are going to raise their interest rates, right? And so when, once they do this, uh, the SMEs are going to be choked. This is in return will lead them to have uh, cost cutting measures. And so with this regard is that they're going to lay off some employees so that they can be able to service their loans. So and so this is going to lead to unemployment, you know. And so we'll have a, a lot of youth being unemployed and not just youth, but even people who are supposed to be in that working bracket. And so in this regard, the economic growth and economic development will be affected negatively. And so that's, that's a, you know, a multiply effect and that is trickling down. And this is not just going to affect us for this year and even the next years to come. And so this becomes quite, quite undesirable un, un, un for the economy and just for people at large, that's what I will say. Yeah. Now, someone at home who maybe uh, might be a, a debtor with one of the credit facilities out here, yes. and is probably wondering, does this financial act of 2019 apply to me? Who, I mean, I have an outstanding loan, say, to Kenya Commercial Bank. Mm -hmm. Do I uh, subscribe to the, to the interest rates that will be that have been uh, introduced after the uh, act was ascended into law, mm -hmm. or I, I, I pay with the terms that I, we had agreed with the lender in the first place? So who actually is affected by this uh, act being ascended into law? The outstanding debtors who are there, or those who have now come on board after the bill was ascended into law? Yeah. So uh, this is has been this has been a point of discussion right. and uh, fear among us Kenyans, like who is going to be affected, who is not going to be affected. But I'd like to check this point to make it kind of clear to everyone out there. If you had an outstanding loan from uh, the previous uh, financial year, and then I think you're safe, even if it's you know that quite a m much of a loan, because now this is going to take effect after after the the enactment of now this financial bill of 2019 so you are not going to be affected until it takes uh, it takes into what what can i how can i put it it takes into yeah so place. basically yeah. we're talking of uh, it only uh, applies to those who've taken loans 
immediately after the day the president has sent it to law. Yes. So yeah. should banks change anything, then now it affects you. If you came after the assentment, uh, the assentment of them into law. Yeah. But if you came before that as a lender, uh, or as a debtor, rather, yeah. then you're okay. Yeah, you're you safe. just do with the terms and conditions that you had agreed with your lender. Yeah. All right, awesome. That's true, yeah. So there's also a, another highlight of this bill, mm -hmm. but we're just going to take a, a brief a look into it. There has been a, a, a measure that this bill has brought forth whereby it is supporting the Big Four agenda in terms of uh, the National Housing Development Fund uh, is not going to be taxed, income tax. You see, from the revenue they get, they are not going to be uh, taxed, the income tax. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think it's a measure that really uh, puts this bill uh, at a really good place from an economist's point of view. Because honestly, we are trying to ensure there is affordable housing in Kenya. We cannot tax that same system that is expected to give us that affordable housing. So I don't know if you support that. This bill with uh, the removal of income tax on the National Housing Development Fund is actually a good thing. What's your view on that? Uh, from my point of view, then, uh, when you are considering the Big Four agenda, yeah. our main aim is to have affordable housing to our people. And so if we are removing taxes from... Um, the way the means people are going to have the houses then for me in my perspective i think it's a good thing all right i will support the awesome. president on that yeah. so it's something that uh people in the housing sector should smile about yes. no more income tax yes all right yeah and the the the, 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 the body which actually will enjoy much is now the national Army housing development fund at the end of the day which is actually it's a good thing and with that we can see now the affordable housing may be falling into play sooner than later right yes i think all right awesome yeah so kenyans have to subscribe to the Financial Act of 2019. Yes, that's they like my it or view. Not. <laughs> yes, it they should. Now a law. It is. Let's cope up with it now. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Welcome. Next conversation, be sure our viewers will be waiting for you. Definitely. And we'll definitely my pleasure bring you always on. to be here. All right. Yeah. That has been Kabri Nyona, yeah. an economist, a student at the University of Nairobi, an alumni of Young African Leaders Initiative, as well as an expert with matters to do with hydroponic farming. But today she was trading her art in matters economics and she has brought forth the views and the highlights of the Financial Act of 2019. Now that wraps our segment of the day on matters Dreamland Voices. My name is Richard Mwenja. See you on the next episode.